and select this image. You're going to select this one here and choose store logo scale 100 and so on. You get the idea. Small logo, you're going to come over here, scale 100, select small logo, and number four, and number five. Nice. So let's look at that. This is a pretty cool tool. All you give it is an image. Uh, I should have probably taken a, a little screenshot here, and we can do that actually real quick. Let's take Matt. Rightfully so, very proud of his little zombie friends. Too bad he's not here to appreciate that comment. I think he's sleeping over there. Oh yeah, he is sleeping right over there. <laughs> Let's take the zombie here and just... Uh, we'll just do something basic like this, just to get a squarish image. And grab a square-ish. That's about ish. <laughs> we'll save this out to our desktop. We'll upload this to the tool. And then we'll get a whole bunch of images, more than you could ever imagine. File, save as. Love this tool. The save as prompt? No, this, uh, <laughs> this particular tool I'm using here. Uh. I personally love it. You know, for Microsoft, I'm not endorsing or uh, approving or denying any other tools, but there's personal tools that I, I, I personally love. I like that one. This happens well. to be one of them. Okay, so let's go over to the website here and choose files and go to the desktop. And that was this guy right here. Now I'm going to download Windows Store Zip. So it's going to upload my file and download a zip that's got a whole bunch of these images in it. There we go. Two megs. Remember when two megs took a long time to download? <laughs> I do. All right, we've got more images than you could ever want here. Um, we have 35 images in here, to be precise. Holy cow. Yeah, there's a lot of images in here. So why do you have so many images? There's different use cases. If you're on different pixel density displays, you know, one icon might scale differently than another, and so Windows will actually select the best icons to use in those cases. So you can provide them. Um, if you're not making really different art assets, like if you're not using vector graphics and creating different scaled out graphics, I just use the basic ones here and they work fine sure. across. Uh, if you really want to be slick about it, then you would have your graphic artist, that guy back there, Matt, um, <laughs> then you would basically use uh, some sort of vector graphic and just create scaled out images. So uh, when you're running on these big high density displays, uh, they look really good, high pixel density displays. All right, so we've got these images here. You go over to Unity. And you go to build settings. Let me go into a virtual machine here. And load Unity up on there. While that's loading, I'll show you. It's virtually the same exact settings. So build settings here. Let that load up there. Um, Windows 8, 8.1, Phone 8.1, Universal 8.1, and you'll see once we go back to the virtual machine here, Windows 10. Again, virtually the same options across the board here. Player settings, this is where we can set the name that we looked at. Now those images, you'll want to set uh, underneath your icon. And then you have your splash screen here as well. So again, that the slide, I can't talk about exactly. Pick these out. So splash image, Windows, scale 100. 620 by 300. We come over here and we say splash image, Windows, 620 by 300. I would unzip all those files and select that one. Make sense? Yes. Clear as mud or clear as water. <laughs> all right, let's go back to that VM and see Unity's loading up here. We're just, uh, what, like three weeks away from Windows 10, aren't we? Oh my goodness, tomorrow is July 1st. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. All right, build settings. Crazy good. So, Control Shift B, if you're a Visual Studio user, it's the same exact hotkey. Now, notice here we have 8081, Phone 81, and <laughs> Universal 81. We've had a bunch of different builds, as you might notice. <laughs> Finally, in, in Universal 10, it's one build for all of the Windows 10 platforms, it's literally one build. So, this, we can say goodbye to all this kind of stuff. We're looking forward to Windows 10. Let's go to our player settings. Splash image and our icons, all the same stuff I just covered. You say build. 
and this will create you your Visual Studio solution. Choose a folder. I'll name it something like Windows Store Build. That generates a Visual Studio solution for you, which I just have, happen to have open here. In the Visual Studio solution, Unity will only ever overwrite your data folder. So if you make changes to your game, you'll pick those up here. If you make changes to your images, those won't be picked up here. So just that's the caveat. If you come back over here and after you've created your build, you change your images, you're going to need to go back in and either add them in Visual Studio or blow this project away and have Unity regenerate it again. That works just fine too. When you want to test it, you can deploy on your local machine or being that this is a universal Windows platform, I can plug in my phone and I don't have to switch over to a different phone project. This is one single project. I deploy it to my local machine. I can go to re a remote Windows 10 machine, download new emulators. Uh, it's going to be kind of cool to see what emulators will be coming out. Uh, device, plug in a Windows 10 phone, deploy it right out to my device. So all the same code, all the same project here, and it just works. Yeah, really, really sweet. Um, Again, I'm not going to do the build here because it's going to take a little bit because of the .NET native and I'm in a virtual machine here. But I can show you. I like the new logo you guys added on there, the, uh, the new splash screen. It's pretty good. It kind of puts it together. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Yep. Now, this was the, uh, the, late, the earlier yesterday build, so I haven't, don't have the later uh, characters near. But you can see. I think it was earlier it's, today build. Earlier today. <laughs> this is the, uh, oh no, this was the late, <laughs> wait, the, uh, wait for the long build. So notice um, the idea of having these displays that, that can kind of scale out like that are excellent because these run by default windowed. And so you want your UIs to kind of resize to this display here. Give it a second to pop over there. So the user can take these and scale them out however they want. So it's very, very important that you're using the UI system, as we talked about before, so you get this kind of dynamic scaling between your different sizes and all that. All right, back to these guys. So generating images, super easy. Building for Windows, also very easy. Yeah. Visual Studio solution is generated from Unity. Um, now, another option that you can do from the Unity side, and you can do this for any existing Windows build, uh, Windows phone or Windows store build now, or on Windows 10, Bring up your build settings, and let's say I'm doing a phone build. You literally plug in your phone, your Windows phone, and say build and run. And this will generate a debug build, deploy it to your phone, and you're playing your game. Yep. So it's a very, very fast, uh, iterative cycle. Uh, if you want to build your Visual Studio solution, you can do that as well. Um, I typically like to run master builds because they're faster. So let's kind of talk about those settings here. I'm sorry, you're going to get that. the profiler then too, right? We'll check out the profiler too, absolutely. Um, on. There we go. So resize over there. Let's close that out. So again, I can deploy really to any device here, remote device as well. X this out. Save this guy. Um, debug, mm -hmm. release, and master. Debug, release, master. Debug, release, master. People that have been used to using Visual Studio for a while, uh, you have a debug build and a release build. Release went to production and debug was not optimized. Now, usually we have three different builds here. So if we look at the actual settings inside of Visual Studio, we have debug. These are not in order. Debug, uh, release, then master. Debug has no optimizations and it supports Unity's profiler. Release is optimized, still supports Unity's profiler. And master is completely optimized, uh, just like releases, but with, has no uh, profiler support that's stripped out from there. Uh, a couple things to watch out for. If I'm going to deploy to a device, like a Windows phone, that phone is going to be an ARM-based device. So I'm going to be doing an ARM deploy here. If I'm deploying to my local machine, this is an x86-based machine. So you know there's just two options here, ARM or x86. Uh, if I try to deploy the wrong type, it will tell me that I've selected a build for the wrong processor architecture. So you have to be careful about that. Um, Visual Studio will give you the message. Again, once you load this project up, these are the only settings you really need to look at. Assuming you've set your publisher name in Unity and your images, this is what you kind of want to check out here. Um, where you're going to play to, where you're going to deploy to. What's your target processor type you're going to uh, be testing on and what your actual build type is.
Profiler. Sweet. Profile, 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 profile. I cannot stress this enough. Let's open up the profiler and run what we have kind of going on here. So window profiler. This is one of the most exciting things about Unity 5 being uh, feature parity with the editor features between um, the personal edition and the professional edition because the, the professional edition before was the one that had the profiler. So anybody that had the free version could not use a profiler. And uh, now you can. So let's go ahead and we are in our main scene. Let's run this. And let's just see. <clears throat> Give it a moment to start up. Okay, go, 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 go. Let it run. Now let's go to the profiler here and we can see we've got a couple different things going here. Third person controller. Um, wait for target FPS. I can see my rendering on here. How much memory is allocated here? So Unity's got 160 megs, um, unused total 365. Mono's using nine and a half megs. So some pretty cool lower level details here. Audio system performance. Now let's let's uh, let's break this, shall we? Let's say. And I know this because this has happened to me before. So we will uh, we'll make this less performant. <laughs> Let's get a couple debug log statements here. Not that many. Maybe like five in here. Just debug log statements. Come back to Unity. Run that again. What was the catchphrase you said before? When it would start up? Oh, pff, wasn't that? It was one, one more, one more. Time. See, look at that. <laughs> All right. Notice you can. My performance is visibly affected from the last bullet. It's not the profiler doing this. You it pushed the, the turbo button on your computer. <laughs> the turbo button. Turn it off. Let's go to the profiler and pause this here. And uh, kind of maximize. Not that. Oops, that's not the view I want. Let's get that same. Let's get that view back again. Quite a wealth of information in there, isn't there? There's a ton of information on there. But there's only one that I want to show you, and it was pretty apparent what happened. But you you should see it in here, uh, glaringly stand out. Go 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 go. I mean, our frame rate before. There we go. This is exactly what I want to show you. The, the top item here, responsible for 96% of the CPU. I open that up, and we look, and it's log string to console. And just to see, uh, we can see it in our, in our profiler here under our rendering. We have, um, where is our, so we've got our draw calls, and does this show us our frame count on here? Uh, we can view it here. Let's just show it here for simplicity. Okay, let's <clears throat> run this game, and we are currently at two frames a second. Oof. All right, let's get out of there and just come back here and undo what the profiler told us was the issue. These debug that logs, just debug that logs. That's it. You probably shouldn't use those, Adam. <laughs> now watch this. I know, it's starting up. One. You're like, what? I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> Come on. Three, no. <laughs> All right, there we go. So roughly 40 frames a second here, and I can still optimize some, quite a bit of this out too. This is an unoptimized game as it stands. Um, although Matt did a good job with the combining of the textures on here. So we're at 35, 40 frames a second here. Not bad for this one, and we have our, we have our effects still on the camera and all this kind of stuff. So yeah, there we go, 40 frames a second. Very nice. Very cool, right? <laughs> that is an awesome, awesome, awesome tool. Awesome tool. Well, I think that about does it. Let's uh, close up here. There's a porting document I have, uh, aka.ms forward slash Unity for Windows. Don't forget on MVA, there's an existing um, porting course on there as well. But this, uh, I kind of keep this as a live uh, document you can go and see changes on. Check out aka.ms forward slash Unity for Windows and visit that frequently and often. 
And uh, we hope that you enjoyed your time today. We, we surely did. Uh, this has been a great day. I love doing this. And so hopefully that you uh, get something out of this because we keep continuing doing this. Now, uh, <laughs> my buddy Matt back there is saying, you know what? You should really you should play that game a little bit to see how far you get. He doesn't think I can make it to the end. Well, Matt, why don't you come up here and you play? <laughs> Let's try it real quick here. And you know what? Get out of the sleeping bag. <laughs> out of the sleeping bag. <laughs> All right, let's try this one time here. I'm gonna ignore the, ignore my dumb zombies. Challenging that that zombie right there. Matt probably wrote that AI right. Yeah, now he thinks that I can't uh, maybe make this turn here. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Now, I do want to be clear, there, when I said we know about 12 bugs on here, there's actually a bug in this code right now where if, uh, when, I, when I jump and then move, it's actually always pushing me in that direction. If you notice, I was looking this way and it pushed me that way. So that's why you're, <laughs> excuses. Excuse. Try the code yourself, you'll see. Turn to the side and jump. Uh, I'll have that fixed shortly. We just uh, didn't have time before this. But again, this is a uh, visit the GitHub URL for that project. Let me throw that up here as well. GitHub.com forward slash Adam Tulipper and on there are my repositories and you'll find the Vamp Kid 3D that we've all worked on uh, for your enjoyment here. Again, feel free to check it out, use it. Uh, check back often. I will be making, uh, I should say we will be making uh, many changes to this going forward. So um, this will be a learning exercise for you. And if you have any questions, reach out. Uh, our contact information was early on. Twitter, uh, at Adam Tulipper. Any questions, issues, you know, uh, reach out to me, adamt at microsoft.com. be more than happy to help you. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.